high. Alright, so as always, if we ignore all of the bugs and the problems and overhyping, I think this update was pretty good. I have not played a ton yet, so I have not tried all of the weapons. I mostly focused on the pyro stuff, which I think is uh, pretty great. Also, I will throw in some pre-update pyro clips as well for comparison. Alright, let's just go through stuff. Um, the new air blast I like way better. It is super weird, but uh, compared to the old one, which was uh, very predictable and almost guaranteed damage, this one actually takes into account where you aim. And as I said, it's really weird how it works. Aiming down will push the target upwards and uh, aiming straight up also pushes the target upwards. And if you aim straight at the target, you will push him back. So to sort of replicate the old air blast, you actually want to aim in front of your target's feet, like you're firing a rocket or something. So even though it's weird, I much prefer having different options like this, depending on uh, what you want to do. The push force is uh, crazy strong right now too, which really sends people flying sometimes, making them harder to hit usually. And reflecting projectiles feels good too. I'm assuming they have fixed stuff like reflecting while aiming at your teammates, but I guess I don't know. The afterburn nerf is good too. I don't know if the balance is perfect, but if you just touch someone with the flames now, it is now slightly less annoying for them. So that's good. Also, you can now again do crit flares on pyros pretty easily. The new flames feel like they make a little more sense, but they also bounce off walls and floors easily now, which means you can set people on fire by shooting the floor. And I noticed the weird way you could take down sentries around the corners no longer works that great because the flames just bounce all over the place. All right, Dragon's Fury is probably my new favorite flamethrower, maybe. Right now though it is very broken because the hits don't always register in a certain part of some maps. Which uh, reminds me of that old Pomson bug, I guess. They haven't fixed it yet in the latest patch, so I don't know. Well anyway, I think the Dragon's Fury is slightly too strong. They have to nerf some part of it. I don't think that the attack speed increase is necessary. Or they could decrease the damage or make it harder to hit with it. It's real good at taking down the buildings though at the moment. Some other problems I have with it is that it shares the air blast cooldown with the normal firing, which is bad. So if you air blast, it takes forever before you can fire again, which just feels terrible. It's okay for the air blast to have a really long delay before you can use it again. That's a big drawback for the weapon, which is good, but it should still work like any other flamethrower and let you air blast whenever. The jetpack is also awesome. Another bug with this weapon right now is that it sometimes doesn't activate, which is problematic. It just smokes like this, and I think it might have something to do with you jumping at the same time, but it only happens sometimes, so I don't know. Anyway, the biggest problem with this weapon is that it takes forever to switch to it. And it feels real terrible. And it doesn't make sense. Again, it's alright to have a delay before you can use the jetpack. But just switching back and forth, there's no reason for it to be so sluggish. If you decide to use it and a spy uncloaks in front of you, it's going to have a pretty easy time gunning you down before you can switch back to a weapon. That's not good. There also doesn't seem to be any impact damage yet when you land on people. They do bounce back though. You also only take like max 10 fall damage or so when using the jetpack. I haven't really tried any of the other pyro unlocks yet. They are not quite as interesting, but they seem alright, I guess. Okay, I only played Spy for like a second. But I tried some of the Ambassador and Dead Ringer changes, and it's uh, real bad. They did what I wanted, which was uh, fall of damage, 
but they went real extreme with it. For starters, you should always be able to do headshots, regardless of range. That's the point of the weapon. Other than that, I think the ranges are alright. This is the distance, which you can still do around 100 damage, which is still a good safe distance for a spy. So I think that's alright. But at longer distances, you should at least be able to do, let's say, 40 damage, which would be double the damage of the stock revolver. Which would mean that you could always finish off someone below 40 HP if you can hit your shots instead of 21 HP, which would be the reason to use it. But now it's only really a short range gun the stock is just better at. But still, 102 damage at long distances is definitely not the answer. You should not be able to see a soldier in the distance walking after spawn with 200 HP and think that, hey, that's a totally viable target for me. I could kill him right now. That should not even be an option for a spy, you know? So they are on the right track. They just messed up quite a bit. And for the Dead Ringer, they also kind of messed up. The reason it's really good right now is because of the speed boost, mostly. But it also was annoying killing a spy three times in a row because they abused the ammo packs. But as I said in my previous video, I think you should still be able to pick up ammo packs. But a big ammo pack should only refill one fourth of the cloak meter. Like, this nerf is not a super big deal, it just made it slightly less fun to play Spy, because you're going to have to stand around and wait much more. And a lot of safe places for a Spy usually also have ammo packs close by. So, for example, if you use all of your cloak meter, you're going to have to wait for 20 seconds. If a big ammo pack restores one fourth of your meter, that's uh, five seconds less you have to wait, and the ammo pack will respawn again, making the time to wait only 10 seconds. So that is half the time if you're in a safe place and can use big ammo packs. But if you immediately uncloak after triggering the dead ringer, and you pick up a big ammo pack, now you have to wait for five seconds total. And if you're in a fight with someone, five seconds is a long time to survive. So, yeah, that's probably what I would do. Okay. See ya.